So yeah, don't worry about Brandy. Um, So here's a closer look on this camera of <laughs> my chicken. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like, I don't know what, <laughs> nice and, and purple and what have you not. <laughs> but it smells delicious. It smells like red wine. That's what we're looking for. Because again, it's uh, red wine, okay? So if you guys are ready to rock and roll but you missed items, okay? Let us get started with uh, the bacon first, okay? I do have my, uh, what you call it? My um, oil that I saved from my potatoes last week. Remember? I said go ahead and save it and strain it, okay? So I do have it. I'm gonna put some of that on my stock pot for my bacon, okay? Maybe a couple of tablespoons to get us started. And then I'm gonna render my bacon. So before that, Go ahead and start cutting and chopping. I'm gonna get my flour and my sugar ready while you guys are finished cutting and chopping, okay? I quarter mine, so quarter them, because you know again it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a while to cook. So you don't want your mushrooms to be not all um, mushy. You want it to be nice and kind of still hold the shape. And so you, you, so you guys can know, uh, so you guys can see, I try to practice what I preach for my uniform, from my head to my toes to my production sheet. This is my kind of my my little list of what I got on my on my shelf here on my. Uh, Cabinet, okay? Uh, my printer stopped working, so I can't print my production sheets. I don't have any copies. So what I did is um, I have all my kind of recipes here attached with tape on my countertop, okay? I will fill out my production sheet when I when I go back to school or, you know, get some copies. So I season my flour with a little bit of salt, okay? That's where it's going. I'm gonna set my salt here on the side. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of sugar. Where's my sugar? There's my sugar, okay. It's been a while since I need sugar. Okay. So the recipe, I believe it calls for um, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of sugar. Um, I'm gonna use maybe like about a teaspoon of sugar. What, the sugar? No, no, it shows that on, on your recipe in the portal. You can leave it out if you want to. I'm gonna add a, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of sugar, that's about it. All right, guys, so you guys ready to start rock and rolling and uh, get good cooking with the uh, chicken or not yet? All right, okay. I'm going to get the camera closer. Hopefully, I don't catch anything on fire here. <laughs> Yes, we're gonna read the red one a little bit, okay? And this is just a few, uh, maybe like about a quarter of a cup. I was able to go to the store and uh, buy this close to the ball, close to the ball. Cabernet is like seven, eight bucks. Not too bad. The cooking is all right, okay? But I saw uh, my favorite one is Kendall Jackson uh, Merlot. That was like about 17 bucks, and now that's, that's not, that's where it's kind of a special occasion kind of deal. I also saw a, a couple of uh, Cabernet, and I was like, nah, mm -mm. So, kind of particular about the wines, the wines that I choose for, you know, for uh, consumption, you know, just to chill. Cooking, whatever, seven, five bucks, no matter.
Chefy, a while ago, I'm going to share this story with you guys, okay? Uh, Chefy, a while ago, remember when Gerald was a uh, restaurant manager at the uh, Travis restaurant and Tamboni was there as a chef? <laughs> 2000, 2001, whatever the year was, we had a wine dinner, we had a wine dinner um, and then or a, a, a large party that came in and they spent a lot of money on their food and wine. And I remember they, they bought a bottle of Camus. Camus wine. It's about, right now, at the store, it's about $70, $80, I believe, the bottle of Camus. So it was a nice big bowl of red wine. And, uh, you know, Chef Tamboni, yeah, go ahead. Who? Yeah, and yeah, the him. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Dan Rather. Yeah. Did he, did, did he, didn't he live in somewhere in the hill country back then? Uh-huh. Yeah. So anyways, this big top, big, uh, big top came in, sat down, all kinds of food, and they ordered a lot of, a lot of uh, wine, but they ordered a bottle of red wine. And Tamoni was big on the bottle of Chemist. He was like a kid with a candy store, you know? So anyways, Gerald uh, played a prank on him, right? The, the people drank the whole bottle of Camus. So Gerald went to the kitchen and got the, uh, the Franzia, the box wine, <laughs> the red wine, and filled it halfway with that in the bottle of Camus. <laughs> and went back and uh, told Chef, look, Chef, the customer uh, didn't take all the, um, or didn't drink all the, the bottle of Camus. He said, what do you want me to do with it? He said, I just leave it in the kitchen. Um, you know, he took it home <laughs> and he came back the next day. He said that was, a, that was the best Camus he ever had in his life. Not knowing that what was inside was Franzia, box wine. <laughs> oh, he was. He was. He was such a, such a fun guy to work with. I, I missed him. <laughs> he, was, he was a prankster. Serious and, you know, he... He did his job really, really well, and I was, you know, it was a pleasure working with him. But man, he was a—he's oh, was always a prankster. Now the recipe calls for like I believe thirty-two ounces, something like that. I'm only using like about a handful. If you're gonna ask me uh, the weight, uh, let me measure real quick. Uh, I'm only doing one serving because it's just, just me. Uh, my dog loves carrots, but he doesn't like to cook. He likes them raw, so I'm not going to feed him my cooked bitchy carrots, okay? So on my scale here, okay, I have about, I get about three ounces of carrots. That's about gonna, how much I'm going to do, three or four ounces. Sorry, Miss Haley, what's going to do? Yes. I cut mine on the bias, long, okay? So what I'm gonna do, just to give you a little uh, sneak peek, here's my plate, okay? I am, going, I am going to line my carrots, fanned out on my plate like that, okay? Towards the middle of the plate. I'm gonna line them out like that, okay? And I'm gonna put my spinach covering half of the carrots in the middle, and I'm gonna position my chicken somewhere along the middle sticking out. So I'm going to have center of the plate with height. And remember, this plate, is, this food is kind of hard to plate up, but this is how I'm going to lay my carrots on my plate. In the middle, fan down. And then halfway, bundle the spinach, and then start laying my chicken against the spinach to give it some height and some uh, center of the plate. Okay? Alright, you guys ready to rock and roll with the chicken? Alright, let's go. I got my uh, two tablespoons of oil, my uh, potato oil in my, in my pot, okay? I'm going to get it nice and hot, and I'm, I'm going to drop my bacon next. Red in my bacon. In the meantime, I am going to take my chicken out of the marinade, okay? And dredge it into the flour, okay? Nicely dredge on the flour, okay? That is also going to help seal the flavors of the chicken inside and the flour is going to act like roux so you don't have to add butter to your um, stock pot, okay? And that should thicken the... 
Yes, I did. I seasoned with a little bit of salt. Okay. I seasoned it with a little bit of salt. I didn't use no pepper because I wanted to emphasize the flavors of the red wine and the chicken. Okay. There we go. I'm going to put this container uh, right here on the side. Okay. So my. Uh, you're just dredging it, lightly dredging it. So see here, this is my chicken, okay? It's coated with flour, okay? Yes, all-purpose seasoned flour with salt. If you want to add pepper, a little touch of pepper, not too much, because it might take away from your dish, okay? So my pot is now getting nice and hot, okay? I can tell because the oil start, get, starts to get a little more thinner. It doesn't look like oil. It, looks, sorry, it should start looking like water, the consistency of water, okay? There we go, okay? So I'm gonna drop about, uh, I would say uh, two ounces of bacon, okay? I got more than bacon than I need because I'm gonna say something for the other class, okay? About two ounces of bacon. I'm going to put this bacon away now so it's not sitting at room temperature on my refrigerator instead. Keep it nice and cold. I don't want it to get sick. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, um, got my mushroom, my garlic, my chicken, um, what else? And I just have to do my, my carrots, my butter, and everything else today. It's really not that hard. The recipe has a whole bunch of stuff on it, but you know, it's not that hard. Hmm. Yes, okay. Because once you sear the chicken, you're gonna re remove the chicken, set it on the side, you're gonna put your, your mirepoix in it. You're gonna saute it lightly. You're gonna put the chicken back in it. You're gonna put that juice back inside the chicken, okay? And you're gonna, you're gonna put a little bit of red wine to go with it, okay? I want my bacon to be nice and crispy. So I'm gonna let it render. I'm letting it render right now, okay? What is it? Yep. That. Yeah, that's it. That same one I got. <laughs> and it wasn't that expensive. What is it, Mr. Jeffrey? Uh, let it render. Let the bacon render. Let it take its time. You want it nice and crispy, like. Okay. So you got the bacon in the pan. Let it render till it's nice and crispy. Okay. Just like I'm doing in my pan. See my bacon is starting to get nice and crispy. I don't want it chewy, okay? I want to have it to have that crunch, okay? Now you can remove some of this bacon and set it aside and like you saw in the video and then sprinkle it on top. Like I said, let it rain some bacon afterwards. Um, it's up to you, okay?
So my bacon is rendered, okay? I got a nice amount of fat, okay? And remember, once this chicken is completely cooked, you can go back and skim out some of the fat, okay? Or dab it with a paper towel to remove some of the fat, okay? Uh, skin on. Remember the skin, like the French cut breast of chicken. It gives it flavor, it protects it from drying out. Okay? I got my skin on, okay? So I am going to remove a little bit of bacon from the pan, okay? Just so I can let it rain later on, okay? So my bacon is now crispy. See that, guys? See Mr. Jeffrey? My bacon is now crispy. There you go. Nice crispy bacon, okay? I'm going to save some on the side. Now I'm going to kind of lower my heat a little bit because it's too high. I'm going to... So my bacon is crispy, I've removed a little bit, I lower my heat so my bacon doesn't burn, and I put in my chicken that has been dredged in flour, skin side down, okay? I'm gonna have to remove some of the grease that got too much. Mm-hmm. I'm removing a little bit of that grease because I have too much grease, okay? Beautiful, lovely bacon grease. Okay. I increased my heat to high because I want to have a nice crispy golden brown color on the skin of my chicken on the outside, okay? Correct, nice to sear until you get the nice golden brown color. Skin side down first, okay? Not yet, okay? So this is what it looks like right now, guys. Let me show you real quick, okay? This is what it looks like right now, okay? Not yet, okay? And then I wanted more sear, okay? All the camera view, this is what it looks like. I wanted more sear, okay? My leg, I'm going to turn it, yeah. I'm going to turn my my drumstick and my leg. There we go. Now they're looking nice and golden brown. See that? Slide, slide your, your skin to the other side. Okay. Oh, it's a, it's on the it's on this on the um. Middle, right hand side, this should be a, should be a, supposed to be an arrow. So let me, let me get it close to the camera if you can see it, okay? Here we go, okay? Right's not that great, but you want a nice and golden brown, okay? 
So I flip it, okay? I remove my chicken now, set it on my towel, okay? Now in here, I'm gonna drop my carrot, my own mushrooms, okay? Mushrooms, okay? Get them nice and sauteed. Remember, they're gonna release some moisture, okay? I'm also gonna drop some of the mirror pot that I got marinated in the red wine, the onion, celery, and carrots in here, okay? Because I want that to be sauteed together. I'm not browning them, because I already have enough browning color of the bacon in the bottom of the pan, okay? There we go, okay? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna sear the skin side down first, okay? So I have my mushrooms, my onions, celery, and carrots from the marinade, and the bacon, where I just uh, rendered my bacon nice and crispy, and I went ahead and uh, seared my chicken uh, skin side down, okay? So I'm sauteing it, okay? I'm not browning, I'm not caramelizing them, I'm sauteing it. You cannot caramelize them because mushrooms have a lot of moisture, so does celery, okay? Yes, sir, you're gonna see it the other side too. Okay, the uh, uh, meat side down, okay? After you use the skin side down first, yeah. My mushrooms, onions, carrots for the marinade mirepoix are sauteing with my bacon, okay? My bacon is not burning because again, those mushrooms and celery release a lot of moisture. So prevents my mushrooms from burning, okay? I got it on high heat right now. Oh, it smells good. <laughs> it smells really, really good, okay? All right, so at the bottom of my pot now, I can see some caramelization or some browning in it. At this point, okay, I'm going to drop my, uh, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of the uh, red wine to deglaze the pot, okay? I'm gonna hit it with maybe like about a quarter of a cup of the red wine from the bottom. There we go, okay? That's it. Just to deglaze it, enough to deglaze it. What is it? You're gonna put some in there right now, see? I'm gonna put some of the wine for the marinade in my um, stock pot, so I'm only gonna use half because other half is for the other class. There we go, okay? So the wine is, is in there, okay? I'm gonna drop my heat to a medium. I'm gonna add maybe like about a cup of chicken stock, okay? Not a lot. I have some chicken stock reserved from last week. So I'm gonna drop about a, a cup of that. Drop a cup of chicken stock. I am going to put my chicken leg and thigh meat back in that same pot where I just dropped my chicken stock, okay? I'm gonna bring down to a boiling point. Yes, sir? That's okay, that's all right. No, I'll walk you through it. Just let me know when your chicken is searing and it's set to the side, okay? And I'll walk you through it. Okay, take it out, put it on the side right next to the bacon that you uh, reserve for later on. Okay, if you guys are following me too, if you guys are on that stage, remove your chicken. Once the chicken has been re removed, add your uh, mushrooms. Your mushrooms, your onions, celery and carrots for the marinade, and saute it for about three to four minutes.
Yes. The, the mere part that's in your marinade. Correct. Once it's sauteed, add, add about a, a half a cup of the red wine or one cup. It depends how much stuff you got in it. Yes, skin side out. Okay. So once you saute your uh, mushrooms, onions, celery, and carrots, so you marinate, you add the chicken skin side up. You add your uh, uh, juice from the marinade. About a cup of chicken stock. Bring that to a boil, drop the heat to simmer. And then you have pearl onions. This is the time to add your pearl onions. If you don't have them, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Now a little bit, a little bit stronger. Okay. Once you you, it's a it's about a cup of chicken stock. Depends on how much how much product you got because your chicken is supposed to be um, almost completely submerged in the liquid. Okay. Because remember, if it's not submerged in the liquid, chicken may not get cooked immediately. You may have some spots that undercook it raw, and you don't want that. You want that chicken to be completely cooked in the red wine, okay? So, my chicken is not cooking. I'm going to turn my back burner to uh, low, medium, medium to low heat, and I'm going to slide this pot back, okay? And cover it. I am not going to use my oven, okay? I'm going to cook it on the stove top. Okay. Yes, you can use beef stock. It's been simmering with the lid on uh, at 1040. I'm going to check it like around 11 o'clock. Okay, I'm going to give it 20 minutes and I'm going to check the chicken, see how tender it is. Okay, once everybody's cut up, then we can go to the next recipe. Okay, just let me know. That's one. How's, how's everybody else on their chicken? Okay. 
let me know when uh, at least um, most of you guys are ready, so can go ahead, go, go forward, okay? Yeah, you can use foil. Cool. So like I said, uh, make sure that you check in about 20 minutes, see how the chicken, how tender it is, okay? If it would have been, um, okay, if it would, okay. If it would have been a farm-raised uh, cage-free chicken, it might take a little bit longer because farm-raised chickens have all the space to run around so they build muscle. More darker meat, more myoglobin in their meat. This is a, not a, a free-range or caged chicken. I mean, this is not a free-range or, um, you know, uh, one of those chickens. It's, it's caged chicken, so it, it doesn't have a lot of muscle, uh, connected tissue, so it's a little more tender. So that's why I say in 20 minutes, I'm going to check mine, see how it is. And uh, depending on that texture, I'm going to let it go or stop it from there, okay? How's the rest? Are you guys all ready set to go? Yep. All right, the carrots next. My carrots are in my, my saute pan, okay? I'm gonna add ha, uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar because I don't have a lot of carrots. Quarter of a teaspoon of sugar. <laughs> make sure, I'm gonna first make sure it's sugar. <laughs> add sugar. Because sugar looks like salt. Quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, okay? I'm gonna open my uh, Topo Chico, my mineral water. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna add just enough to cover the top of my carrots, okay? Just enough to cover the top of the carrots, guys. Okay, here we go, okay? I might drink the rest. Salud. Not a blue drink. I'm gonna add my butter next. Okay. Maybe like about an ounce of butter, because I'm not again I'm not cooking a lot of carrots. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna turn my heat to high, bring the liquid to boil, and I'm gonna then when it's a starts boiling, I'm gonna drop it to simmer. Okay. My carrots are now uh on the stove top. Only thing missing is a pinch of salt. Where's my salt? There we go. That's it. Hmm. My salt up here. My sugar on the top. We get them all mixed together. Oh, at this point, you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys have your bouquet carnet. You can drop it in. Okay. I didn't drop mine, so. It's on my stove top. I don't have a little butcher twine, so I'm gonna put some uh, thyme sprigs on it. Okay. There we go. My thyme sprigs go in it. Uh, I don't have. I think I do have old black peppercorn somewhere in, in this cabinet. Uh, like I said, guys, I didn't. I don't need to cook quite a bit in my house. <laughs> Peppercorns go in. Yeah, like I said, my kitchen hasn't seen this much action in about two years. Peppercorns going. Peppercorns. Peppercorns went in. Okay, uh, it's fresh time. And I do have a little bit of uh, parsley stems that I got from school for the, my on my box. Parsley stems. Hey, I'm even throw a little coal or garlic just because. And I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about the leaks. Well, I, have, I might as well use it. Yeah, I just throw a little whole, whole garlic. And the leek, I'm gonna use this little piece of green part of the leek. There you go. That's my bouquet carne. If I would have had butcher strand, I would have tied it, but I don't, so I'm gonna dish them out later. My carrots are now boiling. I'm gonna drop my heat to low to simmer. Okay. Make sure my butter is dispersed. Okay. 
give it a nice gentle stir on my carrots so there the water is um you know the submerged in the um, mineral water and my show my make sure my my butter is is melted okay when do you know your carrots are done when the water has been evaporated and the carrots are nice and soft you can cut them with the back of the fork i mean with the side of the fork fork tender Once again, my chicken is going. I just got my bouquet garni in it. Okay. My leek, my garlic, parsley stems, peppercorn, whole clove of garlic, and my leek. It's inside. Okay. I'm watching it. My carrots, uh, they were peeled, sliced on the bias, about a quarter of an inch thick, or a little bit less than that. I added enough uh, uh, mineral water to cover them to the top. About an ounce of butter, a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar, and a pinch of salt. Brought it to a boiling point. They're dry, they're simmering now, and I'm gonna let them go the distance until the water evaporates. The, the carrot should be cooked by that time. I'm gonna turn my carrots upside down because the water evaporates, the top is getting exposed to the air, and I wanna make sure that they cook evenly in the water. There we go, nice and gentle. My chicken has been simmering for 10 minutes. So I'm just watching my heat. If it's too high, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. Okay. I can feel my carrots starting to get soft now as so I'm turning it, turning them upside down, halfway to the cooking, which is great. That's what we want. How are you guys doing? Correct. So once the chicken is in, your red one is in, your chicken stock is in. Bring it to a boiling point and drop the heat low to medium, simmer it. it uh, and check it within 20 minutes, see how tender the chicken is, okay?
Carrots are going. Uh, chicken's got up another six minutes before I can check it. I'm throwing my carrots on the side. I can feel them to become nice and soft and tender still. The color remains nice and bright orange. I can see the butter now, okay? They're getting there. They are getting there. If you slice them, yeah, if you slice them too thin, they're gonna cook really fast. That's why I went a little bit thicker. I went maybe like about a quarter of an inch thick. So uh, when they're done, they're not they gonna be falling apart once they're fully cooked. If you like red wine, guys, you go, you're going to love the uh, Coca Vin. If um, and it's not going to be like really dry, like the, the just drinking the wine out of a bottle. It's going to be well rounded in flavors. If you don't like, uh, if you haven't tasted wine yet, this will give you a little peek of how wine tastes when when it's cooked with food. Okay. And the best way to bridge it, once you guys are done, those of you guys who are of age, <laughs> 21 or over, you can, you can enjoy that glass of uh, leftover red wine with your chicken. <laughs> Sit back and chill and just have a nice meal. Yes, it does. It's supposed to smell like herbs and red wine. That's where the, uh, the, the aroma is supposed to come out of the, the pot for your chicken. Yesterday when we were talking about, you know, about today's menu and uh, even last night, I'm thinking, how am I going to plate up this chicken, this coca van? How What am I going to do to make it? presentable that it's not just uh, a bowl of chicken stew in a bowl or a plate. And that's why this morning I decided to go with the um, uh, on the bias sliced carrots so I can fan them out and then have more presentation because my plate is white, my carrots are orange, spinach is green, and my chicken is dark in color. So you're going to have uh, one, two, three, four different kind of color contrasts on your plate. Okay. Yeah, so you gotta you start thinking about you know going over your head, how you're gonna bring those components to the plate, how you're gonna make them stand out. Because again, chicken is chicken, celery is celery, onions is onions, carrots are carrots. But how you're gonna present that plate on the on the, the dish on the plate is what's gonna make you money. Okay. All right, my water is now almost completely evaporated for my carrots. My carrots is uh, nice and tender. I can feel it with my tongues. Okay. See that? Okay. And I can pull one of my carrots out. Okay, I'm gonna sacrifice one for the better good. I'm gonna see if I can cut it with the, the spoon. Oh yeah, I'll do it. There's a little bit of resistance, but that's what, that's what I want them. I don't want it to be too mushy, okay? I'm gonna taste this. Uh, it's too hot. I get it. it. <laughs> okay. There we go. My water has been evaporated. The only thing left behind is the butter on my carrots. I must set them aside. Turn my stove off. Okay. My carrots are done. Okay. In about um, six, another three minutes, I'm gonna check my chicken. Right now, what I have is my other saute pan that I bought at Sam's for my spinach. So my my pan with my spinach is a little bit bigger because the, once the spinach is fresh, it's going to be like a big old bundle. But once it cooks, it's going to uh, uh, decrease its size. It's going to wilt. Okay, that's why I got a bigger pan than my carrots. See, this is my carrot pan. This is my spinach pan. It's about three times the size or two times the size. Okay. I 
I'm gonna get a container, get a set so I can put my chicken and see how tender it is. I don't wanna put it in my cutting board, make a mess. I'm gonna taste this liquid on my cocoa bar and see how it is. Oh, it's delish. It's delish. Well rounded. Not too much red wine, not too much chicken stock. Nice, even uh, um, flavors of the uh, bouquet garni, the chicken, and the red wine. No, you put about a, a cup of red wine in your chicken before it starts to simmer. Okay, so once you uh, saute, uh, render your bacon, remove the bacon, sear the chicken skin side down until it's nice and golden brown, remove the chicken, add the quarter mushrooms, add the celery, carrots, and onions when you marinate it, saute them, add your chicken back in, add about a cup of chicken stock, add about a cup of red wine, your marinade from the red wine, bring that to a boiling point, cover it, set it aside, and let it simmer for about 20 minutes so you can check your chicken, okay? No, no, no. Reserve some so you can enjoy a nice glass, glass of red wine with your meal, okay? Or reserve some because you can cook some uh, later on because we're going to need some more red wine when we go into uh, uh, the following week, week uh, five. We're going to be doing a lot of more beef cookery because Thursday is the last day of chicken, okay? Chicken's ready. Remove the chicken and strain some of the juice out. Uh, you're going to reduce some of the juice to make the sauce out of it, okay? No, no, the, your, your sauce, the one, the one, as it reduces, it should have a nice consistency to be, a, to be the uh, nappe at the back of a spoon. If it doesn't, you may thicken it with a little bit of root that you're going to make on the side, okay? How long did your chicken took to, uh, took to cook? Okay, I'm removing a piece of my chicken. Oh, what is it? Yeah. I remove, remove a piece of my chicken, so 18 minutes. Mine has been 20 minutes. Let's see how mine is. Yeah, it's nice and tender. You're right. 18 minutes for yours, 20 minutes for mine. Depends on your um, chicken size, okay? So I'm gonna turn my heat off, my chicken. Mm-hmm. So, this is my, my, my chicken, Kokoman, okay? I'm gonna strain a little bit of that juice so I can reduce it and make a, make a sauce. So, as I'm looking at my, my Kokoman Jew, it's a little bit too thin, okay? It's like, it's, like, it's like water right now, okay? So, what I'm gonna do, uh, two ways you can go about it. You can either make roux on the side, and then thicken it, afterwards it's been simmering, or you can make a little bit roux, just like you did the velute. So I'm gonna go the velute style. I'm gonna melt some butter, okay? Maybe like about half an ounce of butter, okay? There we go, butter is melting, okay? Once my butter is melted, I am going to add my flour and make the roux like we did for the chicken velute. Okay. Once that is done, then I'm going to add strain the juice from the coconut inside here and continue stirring it with a whisk until it thickens up. If it's too thick, I'm going to add more of my uh, leftover chicken stock to thin it out. Okay.
So, or my, my sauce for my chicken. Two ways you can go about it. You can make a roux on the side, have it ready. Okay, or you can uh, do the velouté uh, style. Melt some butter, add some flour, make your roux, okay, like I'm doing right now, and then stra strain your chicken, chicken uh, coconut and juice in it to thicken it up, okay? So I did the avalute style. I got my roux in my stock pot here. Maybe like about an ounce of roux. That's how much I need. I don't need a lot because I don't have a lot of juice, okay? And I'm going to strain some of this juice from my kokoban into my roux that is cooking right now, okay? There we go, okay? Okay, and I'm stirring it, okay, whisking it with a whisk, looking for that, that thickness to be acquired, okay, to the back of the pool. There we go, okay. It's too thick, too thick. So what I'm going to do, it looks like gravy. I'm going to have a little chicken stock to thin it out, okay. There we go. I want that to be like the velute, nice and up okay. Taste that sauce. Mm -hmm. So, back of a spoon is nice and nape. Okay? My, my, my chicken juice sauce, my cook of sauce. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna set it aside. I'll let you guys catch up before I go with the spinach, okay? How's your chicken? Does it cook? Did you guys check that out? Okay. Miss Janet is ready. How you doing, Miss Trinity? You almost caught up?
How you doing, Mr. Jeffrey? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, as long as the chicken is tender, you can strain that juice. You can strain that juice and do it like the chicken velute. Melt some butter in a small stock pot, add a little bit of flour, and strain that juice in it, and it thickens up really fast. How you doing, Miss Ellie? You ready to rock and roll with the spinach? Okay, so hang tight for a few more minutes. Uh, Mr. Christopher, how's you doing, Mr. Christopher? Valanda, Jonathan, Avrin, Hilaria. Good, Jonathan? Okay. Cut up or not yet? All right. Okay. Okay. How's Mr. Derek? How's it do, Mr. Derek? Are you cut up? Hey, hold it, Mr. Jalen. You cut up or not yet? All right, Mr. Brandon. Are you cut up, Mr. Brandon? Are you cut up or not yet? Where you at? All right. How's your chicken? Tender? Okay. Robert, how's Robert doing? Are you cut up or not yet? All right. Mr. Larry, how are you holding up? <laughs> I know you're there, but how's your production? Are you caught up? Mm. All right, cool. How are you holding, Miss Chelsea? I know, you, I know you want, you're one of our fast ones, Miss Chelsea, so how are you holding up? <laughs> okay. Mr. Cameron, how are you holding? Where are you at with your chicken? Cameron. Where you at with your chicken? Mr. Cameron, Mr. Contreras, where you at with your chicken? Where are you with your chicken?
Okay, you got a lot to catch up on, so just watch what we're doing, okay? Follow your recipes. Uh, take a look at the slide that is uploaded on the video and also the, uh, the video and the slides on the portal, okay? To catch up. Okay. Mr. Garrett, how are you holding your chicken? Mr. Garrett, Garrett Ivisic, hi, hi, what's up? A lot to catch up on, man. A lot to catch up on, okay? Yes, sir. Parsley, how do you chop parsley? So there's two ways you can store parsley. First, rinse it, you know, and rinse all the water and, and, and uh, drain all the water out of it, and then roll it in a dry paper towel, okay? Do not store it in a Ziploc baggie because it's, it's still like, emitting gases and it's gonna spoil faster. If you store in a cup of water in your refrigerator, it's going to wilt like a, a bouquet of roses that's been sitting for two weeks, okay? And in a paper towel, it should last at least about three, four days. You can definitely dry it. Uh, I don't know if you, had, if you have a dehydrator or you want to use your oven to dry it out. It is at the very lowest temperature. If, if it goes to below 200, if it goes to below 200, the lowest degree you possibly get, okay? But you... Yeah, it depends on your equipment. If you don't have a, if you don't have a silk pad, use if you don't have a silk pad, use a parchment paper. Okay. How are you holding, Mr. Colby? You ready to rock and roll with the spinach or not yet? Awesome blossom. Okay. Who else? Uh, Jalen, how you holding up? You ready to rock and roll with the spinach? Jalen, thumbs up. All right, cool. Timothy's ready to set to go. Natalie, how you holding with your uh, chicken? Are you ready to rock and roll with the spinach or not yet? Miss Natalie, Natalie Leos. Yeah, I know, <laughs> you can't hear us. All right, so most of you guys are ready to rock and roll, okay? I am going to go with my spinach next, okay? That's the last piece of the puzzle uh, in cooking-wise before we start assembling the plate, okay? So my pot, my, my saute pan is bigger than my uh, carriage vichy. I'm going to get it nice and hot, okay? Once it gets nice and hot, I'm going to drop my about two ounces, an ounce of uh, butter. Depends how much spinach you got, okay? But remember, spinach uh, leaves a lot of moisture out, okay? Okay, I'm dropping my butter now to melt it and get it nice and hot, okay?
and I got this little bundle of spinach, okay? Out of this spinach, it's gonna be wilted really, really fast, guys. Again, it wilts really fast, okay? Then I got my minced garlic ready to rock and roll. What is it? Yeah, about too close. Give or take how much spinach you got. You don't want it to be too garlicky. You want the garlic to complement the spinach. My butter is now melted, okay? I'm gonna add my, like about a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic, okay? It's about too close, give or take, okay? I'm sauteing my garlic real quick. Okay, when you know your garlic is done, until you start seeing it to turn a little bit brown, okay? Stir on my pan so it doesn't cook just in the back, okay? My garlic is now a little bit brown in color. At this point, I can smell it nice and toasty. I'm gonna drop my spinach, boom, okay? Yes, sir. Boom, sugar boom boom. Mm -hmm. I'm not chasing dragons, sugar boom boom. But now some rap song. <laughs> if you're old school, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about when I say chasing dragons, right? All right, so I'm not chasing dragons. Sugar boom boom. Oh, you know that song too, huh? All right. It's, a, it's an awesome rap song. The girl has awesome uh, uh, hooks in the background, man. My spinach is wilting, okay? <laughs> yeah, sugar boom boom, not chasing dragons. <laughs> I'm sauteing my spinach, okay? I'm surprised you know about it. All right, cool. We're on the same page. All right. <laughs> I'm catching up there, man. <laughs> okay, yep. One day at a time, exactly. I'm dropping my heat to low. I don't want my spinach to burn or my carrots, I mean, my uh, uh, garlic to start burning. A little bit of salt, that's it. Saute it, boom. Spinach is done. That, that's how fast it is. Sugar, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna race unless it's all. Huh? Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Ooh, camera's falling. Here we go. Okay. So I am going to start plating up, guys. Okay. So I got the camera pointing at my plate. Okay. Let me see if I can bring it a little bit closer. Okay. So I can give you more of a... There we go, top view, one of the camera. All right, cool. So I'm gonna start plating up, all right, guys? Just don't wanna burn my, okay. So like I said, there's a reason why I have my carrots sliced on, this, on a bias long way, okay? I'm dabbing on the little bit of uh, on towel, so I don't, I don't want too much grease on my on my plate. Okay, one carrot. Okay. Two carrots. There you go. Three carrots. I want them facing the same side. Okay. <laughs> Even numbers. <laughs> Why? Right, just for Chef Paula, I'm going to go odd numbers, okay? Just for Chef Paula for today. Otherwise, you. Uh, I'm just for Chef Paula. I'm going to go odd numbers. I'm going to put five carrots, okay? See how I place them on my plate, okay? <laughs> I want to go with my spinach now, okay? I'm going to grab my spinach and then bundle it and twist it with my pair of tongues, okay? I'm gonna grab a little bundle 
and put it right here in the middle. As I'm putting it, I'm twisting it a little bit nice and gentle so I don't want to disturb my carrots, okay? My spinach is in the middle, covering the, the base of my carrots. I don't want to put too much spinach, okay? Here we go, that's enough spinach, okay? I'm gonna bring my cocoa on next, okay? So, my drumstick, okay? Uh, it's gonna, it's, it's sliding. It's resting against the spinach. So is my thigh meat, okay? It doesn't look pretty because it's, you know, it's being cooked in red wine, okay? I'm gonna see if I can place it on top here. Push it down. There we go, okay? Nope. Come on, work with me. There we go. Uh, stay, 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 stay. Stay. Oh. There we go, it stays now. <laughs> I'm gonna wipe my plate clean, okay? Cause I don't want this, this uh, dabbing sauce, my plate. Cause I'm gonna use that, that negative space or the, the leftover space for my sauce, okay? There we go. Okay. I'm not gonna put one of my pearl onions here to offset the darkness of the spinach and the chicken. Maybe a, a carrot here from my mirepoint that has been cooking in the, um, whatchamacallit, in the red wine. Maybe a piece of celery here on the side so you can emphasize your cuts, okay? Now I'm going to go with my sauce next, okay? This is my sauce. Okay. I'm going to grab a little spoon of my sauce. Boom. Put a little bit dab here. Okay. And then run my spoon, just like you saw Gordon Ramsay on the video. There you go. Now, the last piece, I'm going to take my little bit piece of bacon that I have reserved, and I'm going to sprinkle it right on top. Okay. Not on the sauce though, okay? There we go, okay? Pokemon chicken. Okay guys? That's it. I'm gonna take a close up picture and, and share with you guys, okay? And that's what, that's what she wrote, Kogavan chicken, guys, okay? Uh, no, no, I'm gonna share the picture later on when you guys are done. I forgot to put a little bit of mushroom on that. I'm gonna show the mushrooms too. Here we go. There we go. That's it.
Masoskim, a real nice guy, guys and ladies. It has the flavor of the red wine, not too starchy, and it just has enough salt. Yes. Sorry, what was that? Uh huh. Yes, I put the, I put the mushroom on the plate too. I forgot to add them in, but I just put a couple of mushrooms on my plate because I want to emphasize the uh, the meal product that has been cooking in the uh, marinade. Get the woman's yelling, damn it. Sorry, I thought you said something about your chicken. Okay.